before I deploy the game, I'm going to make smaller changes in the gameplay, for example, giving users the opportunity to enter the username, and so on. The game is now working properly, and I'm not going to make any major changes anymore, but before I deploy it I wanted to add a few extra elements, so that the users who see this for the first time could enjoy it a little more. My first idea would be letting the users giving names for themselves, so instead of player 1 and player 2, they could decide who they want to be, and just like last time I will start this with a simpler case too, for which I will go back to the light switch program from the beginning of the previous episode, and what I want here first is, once the user entered the name and pressed the send button, I will simply replace the text field and the send button. To the username display the text and the switch button below that. First I create a form in the HTML file with the ID user form and leaving the action attribute blank. The form will consist of a P tag saying enter name, an input text field, which I set to required. I also set the maximum length to 10 characters and I turn off the autocomplete. Plus I put a submit button at the end of the form. And I also create a div tag below with the ID of switch area, which will consist of a p tag as well, where the username will be displayed, and the switch button that I already have from last time. Then I will use an internal CSS just for one single line on the top of the head where I set the display attribute of the switch area div to none, which means that it will be invisible once the page has loaded. And on the client side, I'm going to grab the form and the div elements by the ID, calling them form and switch area div. Then I declare a username variable, which will store the input from the user. And I'm not going to change any of the existing code, instead of that I just go to the bottom and use the onSubmit property on the form variable. This onSubmit is an event handler that processes submit events, which are usually part of the HTML forms. Here first I call the prevent default method, because otherwise the page will be reloading on submit, which I don't want. The value of the username variable will be the value coming from the text input, that's what the user entered. And I take the form and the div elements, and I set the display attribute of the form to none, and the display attribute of the switch area div to block so that the form will become invisible once the button has been clicked and the div will be visible. And the last step will be changing the content in the p tag. To do that, I take the p tag's ID, user info, and the value of its inner HTML property will be you are switching now as and then the username. And to see if that's working, I wouldn't even need to start the server because everything's happening on the client side but I still do start the server to be able to switch the light, so if I don't enter anything, I cannot move on because the field is set to required. So I enter the name, then the whole block disappears and it gets replaced by the one with the light switch button. And that's it for this. I thought I'd include this short exercise as a warm-up before starting to work with the larger code. Now I can go to the game and continue where I stopped in the last episode. Here I can follow the same steps as for the light switch example, so I start by copying this whole form from there into the index.html file, and I leave it without any changes for now. Then I wrap the canvas element inside of a div, and the ID of the div will be game area instead of switch area. And finally I do one line of styling in the head section. I set the display attribute of the game area div to none. Then I go to the client.js and I set the form and the game area div to JavaScript variables by grabbing them by their ID. And on the bottom of the JS file, I define the onSubmit function for the form by using the prevent default method on the event, making the form invisible and the game area visible, just like in the light switch example. Then the value that came from the user will be the value of the name property of the player object, which is defined by the self ID variable. And once that's done, I'm going to emit this name property to the server, and later the server will broadcast it to every player that are in the same room. Before doing that, I want to mention that the connection to the server already happens when the form appears, and not when the canvas becomes visible. 
and a good way to show that is letting the user know their room number even before providing a username. I can go back to the user form in the HTML file and set the ID of the first paragraph to player welcome and let me just change the max length to 12 instead of 10. And then in the client file I go to the place where the client object is instantiated which happens in the update connections event when the client balls object with the ID of the self ID value is created. So far all I did in this condition was attaching the player to the keyboard listener. Now I grab the new P element from the HTML file and by using inner HTML I'm going to welcome the user and let them know what's their room number even before they start typing their username. And I can test if this is working by restarting the server. Then if I open a few new tabs in the browser I don't need to do anything to know in which room did the server put my client. What the server doesn't know yet is the client's username. I've already emitted it at the end of the form's onSubmit function and I will make the server listen to the client name event inside of the connected function. It will take the data and the server boss object with the sockets ID will get the data as the value of its name property. And now I could emit this data to the room where the client is and then every client in the room would receive the name of the new player. But there is a problem here, namely that if the second player joins to the server after the first player has already provided its username, or in other words, the first player can already see the canvas at the moment the second player just arrives to the user form, then the second player won't have the chance to receive the name of the first player. And that's because the first player's name only gets emitted to the connected clients in the room when its username gets submitted. So when a second player joins after that, the first player will see the second player's name, but the second one won't see the first player's name. And this is an issue that needs to be solved. I want to send the usernames to a room only when both players have provided their usernames. To see how many players have done so, I create a new function called players ready in room that takes a room ID as an argument. And what it does is it iterates through all the existing players and if a player is in the given room and it has also provided a username then the counter which started at zero will increase by one and after the iteration the function returns with the value of that counter. Then I can use this function in a condition up in the client name event. I want a room reaching a specific number of the connected users with existing usernames which in the case of this game will be two. Only then do I want to iterate through the players and send the names to the room where the name of the client came from. I emit the players' names and IDs in the event called player name, and then the client will listen to this event, and all it does is it puts the name from the server in the property of the client of the ID that just came from the server as well. To be able to test this I need to modify the user interface on the client side so that it displays the names of the users as well, not only the score. So the player1 info will be on the left side, displayed in blue. The player2 info will be on the right side, displayed in green. And if a client hasn't provided a username yet, that will be displayed in black. And I can check if this is working or not. First I enter the name of the first player, it's in the stadium now. Then I open a new tab, provide a name for the second player, and I should be able to see two names in both of the canvases. And just to make sure, I open a third and a fourth tab, see if everything works in those canvases as well. I should be able to see two names everywhere, and players ready to play. Now it's not easy to tell when to stop adding new features to this game, every time I fix something there is suddenly new problems to solve, but there is still one more thing I want to change, and that's that the first connected player can already start the game before the second one arrives to the stadium. I don't want that, and to prevent that I'm going to create a new object on the server side, called game is on, and that will attach a boolean value to each of the existing rooms. And I want that the server won't emit any position details from a room to the client unless the game is on value of that specific room is true. So when should this value turn to true? I'd say when both players are ready in that room, which is something I'm already checking in the client name event. 
So at the end of the condition there, if both players are ready, the game is on of that room will be true, otherwise it will be false. And in the server loop I change the structure a little bit. It will iterate through all the rooms in every frame and the game logic function and the emit functions of the players and the ball will get called only if the game is on for that room is true. Another thing I want is that the name of the winner will be remembered after their third score has been reached. For that I create an h1 element in the game area div in the index.html and add a little styling to it in the style tag above, setting the font color to red and put it in the center. And I will put some text in it in the client.js file in the update score event using a new condition on the bottom. If the score of a client is 3, then the inner HTML of that h1 tag will display the winner's name. And I will keep that message under the canvas until the first goal of the upcoming game, for which I need to add an extra line here. Whenever a new score comes, the inner HTML property will become empty. And then I restart the server and I will try to win with one of the players. And once that's done, I see this red message telling me who won. And that stays there until the first goal of the next game. And it looks like that is working fine. As I've mentioned, it's not easy to decide when a game is ready because new ideas keep coming. But now I think the most important features are already included and the other improvements I'm still planning, like adding a database or calculating and storing user statistics or even designing a layout for the front end, this would be whole new topics that are right now not falling within the scope. However, here are still a few tiny little changes. After some experimenting, I decided to add some angular friction to the capsule so that they won't keep rotating forever. And the value of the angular force property will be also lower so that they won't turn so quickly once a right or a left key has been pressed. I could provide the users the opportunity to set these property values manually, but for now they will be set. And finally a little styling for the front page. I created a logo for the game in paint, which I put here. And I changed the look of the form element. I copied a link from the Facebook developer website so that people will be able to share the web page on Facebook. And now I think that it could be the time to put this game on the internet and see what happens. All the code I wrote can be found on GitHub for each episode. So if somebody wants to take a look, there will be a link to it in the video description. And that's it for now. Next time I will go and deploy this.